Well, here we are again, and we're ready to roll, and we've got more exciting guests coming. We're going to bring us up to date on why they're involved in the South-South Awards this evening to focus on really very important issues. We, we often overlook these, but they're so important to us. Why is it important for all of us to think about reducing infant mortality rates, to improving maternal health care programs, and to look at information, communication, and technology to help us create this better world? And we're going to be doing that tonight, all night long, and even after tonight, into tomorrow and into the next year. Afaf, who is our next guest? You know what? The beautiful Mary Banari. Come on over. All right. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Please come on over. Grammy Award winning violinist. How are you this evening? Very excited. It's a very exciting evening. Absolutely. And I heard you, uh, you know, just performing, doing your thing in practice, and I have to say it sounded remarkable. I can't wait for our viewers to hear you and watch you on stage. How does it feel being here tonight? Um, just seizing the moment because I think it's a very important night, and I'm more than honored and humbled to be a part of it and um, being a part of. Uh, global community and creating partnership between different countries and cultures. You know, I was raised and born in Israel and I live in the United States and um, I know how important it is to think beyond yourself and be aware of what's going on in the world. Are you going to give us a little bit of, a, of an idea of what you'll be playing tonight and why? I'm going to play a piece It's called The Ten Commandments. It's very epic. I'm actually opening the show. They wanted something big and powerful to set up the vibe and the mood and put everything in a good spirit and celebrate. We can't wait to hear you with that amazing violin. I'm very much looking forward. Thank you. Yuri ben -Ari, thank you so much. Thank you. We are here with John Centauri, chair of the graduate program at graduate film program at NYU. Thank you so much for being here, Mr. Tintori. We were in China together, and it was absolutely an amazing trip. We were telling the gentleman beforehand about our experience there. John, I got to ask you, it's all about information, communication, technology tonight, and you're one person who's truly familiar with that at NYU. Tell us how you think, not only can, obviously, what we're celebrating tonight is really helping in terms of fostering education, but how can that play sort of to the next level, not only basic development, but of course in getting creative with film production? Well, that, that's the trick because we have all these technologies now that are so exciting and make, uh, th we have all these different possibilities and then you mix that together with good storytelling and important stories, you know, stories that need to be told and that's where it all comes together. Absolutely, I agree. Do you find in your program, are you bringing more in about what's going on in the world to help the students better understand exactly what is out there, some of the problems that are being confronted perhaps in the area of infant mortality rates or universal education? Are students today getting more involved and want to do more to help create this better world? It's, in, it's a good question because our mandate really is to teach students how to make films. But of course we're very conscious of what's going on in the world, so we have a very international program. So we have people coming from many different backgrounds with stories to tell. And, and it's that symbiosis when people get together and they find out about other cultures and they get curious about them and they want to learn more and then the stories spring from it. So it's, we're, we're it, it happens. We create an environment where these kinds of things happen. And you help pique their interest. That's, that's the idea, yeah. It certainly is. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, it's so to great see to see you. Again. Again. Yeah, good. Thank you. Enjoy the show. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Good to see you. Ladies and gentlemen, Robin DiMaggio and his beautiful family, the multi talented Robin DiMaggio, please come on up. How are you this evening? Good. How are you? We've got part of your family here. How are you? Dalton. Really good. Hi, Dalton. Hello, beautiful and elegant mother and wife. Tell us your name. Hi, I'm Marty. What a cool name. Mr. Robin DiMaggio, how does it feel being here tonight? You're so instrumental in tonight's uh, showcase of amazing and talented performers. I feel like I'm going to represent correctly tonight. <laughs> that says it all. Let's talk a little bit about ICT. ICT, Information, Communication, and Technology for the Development of Countries, right? Not only developing countries, which of course we're highlighting of the Global South, but even developed countries who really would love to advance you know, themselves more. You're you know, a native of, of Italy, I, and of course we've all pretty much grown up here in the United States. ICT is really something that the United States has truly, truly embraced. Does that make you proud? 
Extremely <laughs> proud. Extremely proud, of course, yes. Anything to evolve and to, to show education with technology, I think, is where we're going, obviously. What would you like to see happen in tonight's show in terms of the instrumentalist, of course, our vocalist tonight, and just really the theme of tonight where we're talking about changing people's lives here. You know, we're, we're, it's fun and light that we're sharing this, this conversation, but it's truly the metamorphosis, if you will, of going from poverty to really well-being and health. So what does that mean for you? To me, it's something my wife taught me, which is pretty much awareness that we are all one. We're not higher or lower or we should all look at each other as, as earthlings and, and we are one people. And you know what, I have to ask your beautiful wife. We know a lot of these countries are being um, honored and acknowledged for empowering women and children. You're a mother of three beautiful boys. Tell us what your thoughts are in terms of how information or communication technology, or whether it's cell phones or broadband technology, can really make sure and help a family, right? Make sure that you're, you're communicating with each other, you know where your sons are, and even for yourself, that your doctors are wired in, let's say, and they know the latest and greatest in healthcare. I absolutely agree. I couldn't agree more. I actually have cell phones for all three boys, and we live in Los Angeles where there are earthquakes, and that's always a possibility. So it's, it's a, um, a safety net, I guess, uh, so to speak, to know that we can reach them, and hopefully in case of an emergency, that would be the case. And Hansen, young man, you're not going to get out of here without me asking you a question. You know what climate change is, right? Yeah. We um, cover the UN every day at South South News, and we went to an event uh, on forests, right? So there's these kids about your age who basically plant a million trees in each country. And that's really phenomenal. And that's to make sure to prevent what's happening through climate change. Tell us if you can talk to world leaders who are here tonight, because you are right now, Tell us what you'd like to tell them to make sure that your life tomorrow and the life of your children is, in fact, a beautiful one. Um, I think everyone should just, like, do the best they can to help the world, just however possible, whenever possible. Because it's not hard to. Just the little changes can do great things. They sure know what to do, right? And they have the resources, right? Yes. They need more kids like you to tell them, just stop talking and do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone can just get up, just do it. <laughs> yeah. You guys are amazing. So wonderful to meet you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Enjoy the show. Michelle, what is happening in the VIP room? Is it clearing out? Is the energy still crazy there? The energy is still great in here. We just had the president of Nauru but, uh, walking through, and he's being interviewed right now. But I think he's zipping through because, like everyone else, they want to be in the auditorium to be able to see all the presentations and see the first performance. So a lot of the people are starting to head straight in right now. Um, but we're very excited to see what is going to go on next at the South South Awards 2011. Thank you so much for that, Michelle. Mr. President, forgive me. Tell us about um, really how information communication technology has developed in Slovenia, how that country is maybe working regionally with other countries. And, and really, I got to thank you for being here tonight. Now I'll never forget your face again. Yes. Now, look, I mean, high speed internet is a must. And young people nowadays communicate solely by internet, by cell phones. And this has changed life completely. I mean, there is no aspect of life which is not affected by this. And I would say, essentially, this is a time when information has made it possible for more people to experience change in a shorter period of time than ever in history. And I think you say it all. You know, you absolutely put it all together so succinctly, and I'm sure your wife will agree. Tell me what you think from your perspective in terms of when women and children are taken care of and how they're empowered, especially now because the conversation tonight is about information communication technology. But how do you think women's lives change when they're taken care of? What do you mean taken care of? They take care of themselves. <laughs> yes. Meaning meaning through, through incredible no, 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 no. leaders like your no, husband. No, no, no. When the government makes sure that women and children are taken care of through initiatives. <laughs> I think that in, in our country, uh, this is not the question. No, women take care of themselves by using, by using the technologies. Yeah, they, they use 
use all the technologies, there is no difference between women and men here in this respect. Actually, I think that the new uh, information technologies have empowered the girls because they use that a lot in school. They become very good at school and new technologies make work much uh, easier, much less burdensome. And that's an advantage for women. So they are making much better uh, effect and they are, they are achieving very good results at schools and subsequently in professional lives. So information is tool. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about the public-private partnership in Slovenia. How is that coming along and how has that changed lives in Slovenia? Well, we still have a large public sector and uh, public-private relationships are compli complicated, complex, they are evolving, I would say. We, we don't have a stable set of formula for that purpose. It depends on the area. For example, if one builds, a, a, let's say, a school, that, that's one thing. That can be done through private-public partnership or perhaps certain medical facilities. But uh, there are certain areas where this doesn't happen sufficiently. Your Excellencies, thank you so much. And what an honor to have met you in person. Thank you so much. Enjoy the evening. Thank you. That was the President and First Lady of Slovenia. You know what? It's, it's so inspiring. I, I was sort of taken aback because I wasn't expecting the president of Slovenia to walk right over here himself personally without security. It was, it was so phenomenal. I was really taken aback. And you know what? He really does. He said it all. That the cooperation is what it's all about. You know, even though the public and private sector, the public sector is still part of the, the primary, let's say, engine, engine driver in Slovenia, but initiatives are coming together. And I love how the first lady just came back at me and said, you know what, women take care of themselves. And that's really what it's about. But I think my point was, you know what, it takes two to tango, right? If the government helps you, then you can help yourself. And women are very independent, obviously, in Slovenia Absolutely. and many other parts of the world. And we see more and more of that every day. And of course, that's millennium goal number three, empower women. It. It, every study that I've ever seen in my life that looked at the role of women in a very, uh, well, in society, regardless of developing or a developed society, regardless of which it might be, shows that the woman is the most critical player in the family, in the neighborhood, in the city, in the province, the state, whatever it might be. And that's why it is so critical today, and the UN recognized this many years ago, as did many non-governmental organizations, to work with women, to help them to get an education, to help them develop their economic opportunities. And that's through micro-lending. These micro-enterprise programs are wonderful to help women start their own businesses. And this, again, is going to help strengthen that woman, but also strengthen that family and that country. And you know what, we, I think we take for granted, and I think what's really come to sort of eye level awareness for me anyway, as a, as a journalist covering the UN every day, if women are empowered, they can not only take care of themselves and become better global citizens, they can take care of their children, take care of their communities, go on to public or private serv service, and therefore create, and I'm, really, this, I'm not saying this is a cliche, but create a better world, because really women, let's face it, not only take care of themselves, but they take care of others, much more likely than men do, right? Men are out really kind of doing their thing and, and of course driving, driving the home. But when we take care and empower women, the world is really a better place. It certainly is, and that's why so many of these programs have focused on empowering women. It's so very important. Well, I believe we're going to have another Looks guest like, yeah, come we're in being in just gestured. a moment. Uh, yes. Well, hello, how are you? And a good evening to you. Please, please, come on down here. This is the, uh, the I want to say, president and CEO of Polaris <laughs> Air Airlines. <laughs> I guess it's all the same. How are you this evening? Great, how are you? Thank you. It's a pleasure being here and really enjoying this tremendously. Michael, tell us, tell us your involvement here tonight. I understand, of course, that you're, even though I didn't get a chance to go on that beautiful jet, but I understand that your private jets have the capacity of taking 20, 30 people you know, wherever they want and to any destination. Tell us how information communication technology is used in your company. Well, we use it quite a bit uh, by uh, uh, allowing uh, organizations like your organization to spread the word about what we do and how we do it. And uh, we, uh, uh, we, uh, we do a lot of advertising, but we also believe in this program, this uh, Millennium Development uh, uh, goals that you now have here, and uh, we're, we're, this is a great opportunity, and we support this, and uh, we'll continue to support it. 
I have to ask you, and I know you're, you're angsting for a question, but I'd love to hear from your perspective on corporate social responsibility. Again, we hear a lot about it at the United Nations, but you're a business owner. Do you think corporate social responsibility is, a, is enough of a driver to really help stimulate uh, and help individuals of, of the developing countries? I do believe it is. I think that's, uh, that's probably the key right now, you know, to do that. And, uh, and we believe in the goals. I mean, you know, ending poverty, uh, raising the level of education, um, you know, the rights of women, and I think this is the only way we're going to be able to do it. I mean, this is a very, very big part of it altogether. So, uh, uh, and again, we thank you so much for the opportunity that you've given us. What a pleasure and to see you again. Thank, thank you so much. So Enjoy the evening. Thank, thank, thank you so much. Great thank to see you. you. Thank you. Thank you. We are here with the beautiful and talented Uma Sangari. Uh, uh, bienvenue à New York City. Huh? Thank you. Thank you. Ça va bien à toi? Ça va très bien. I'm very good. Very well. <laughs> now, will you be singing in en français or en anglais? Um, I sing in my language, Bambara, African language. I will sing in Bambara, yes. Well, and you know what? You got to tell us a little bit about this this beautiful dress. Is it? Does it symbolize your country? Ben, oh mon Dieu, je vais m'exprimer en français. Ça c'est l'habillement africain, malien, et c'est fait par les les femmes. This dress is uh, do by women, all the women. They, they make the color, they make anything. It's like this, this uh, women, Malian woman uh, design. Yes. Well, you wear it very, very well. When they say prêt à porter, c'est toi. Hein? <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Absolutely. And I want to hear maybe some choices, some selections for tonight. What do you have in mind? Song titles? Song titles? Okay. A voice from heaven. May God bless. Thank you so much. Wonderful meeting you. I cannot wait to hear you on stage. And merci à toi. Merci beaucoup. À bientôt.